Welcome to the defense of the ancients. Prepare for battle. Thirty seconds to battle. The battle begins. Actually, as Mickey is already getting gone on, a ton of damage via collapse. He's getting blocked a bit though. As Mickey will end up dropping just barely the right click of Mir on that Shadow Demon collapse, going to end up getting traded out. So it's a one for one to start. As Insane is continuing the pressure onto Mira, but going to walk away in their respective ways. I feel like Spirit always make a point out of not being the favorites. I, I wonder if they truly think that they're not the favorite of this tournament, or at least one of them. Uh, they had a great group stage and a great spot. I, I mean, he makes a fair point, right? They, they did primarily beat teams that are now eliminated, so it's easier to look good, but that first game against Liquid, which you could say is their hardest test so far, it also not run. To be fair, if somebody asks you that question, you look like a giant douche if you say, yes, we are the favorites. That's a bad thing, usually. I would say, at least. I mean, you, you could... You could maybe not say we're feeling mediocre okay. if, if you're winning every, like, 92% of your games, you know? But they're doing quite well. Uh, may, the maybe, here. They, maybe their goalpost is just 100% win rate. So if you lose even one game, then it's a mediocre tournament. Sure. You know? If it's you have that attitude, aren't you the favorites? <laughs> I agree. I think well, a lot of people think... They, here's the replay. I know. Here's your replay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I thought you almost pulled the Suns fan. I did not. I would never. <laughs> Yeah, seeing the replay here, so... I mean, pretty standard stuff for a little bit of a skirmish. Weaver is an exceptionally frail hero once Shukuchi is on cooldown, if you take the fight. Very long cooldown, level 1. It's 15 seconds on that spell. Sometimes people tend to forget, because you just have this image of Shukuchi here, there, and everywhere, but that's obviously a later thing in the game, and... Careful when you... Fight, which Dyer's fights you take on this. has been killed. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the lineups. The panel was pointing out that Spirit's lineup is very team fight heavy and very cool down reliant, which is very true. But Poshka actually not letting us talk about lineups right now. Right, charge into Blood Grenade. He's about to very fire. Getting pursued, oh. but Zion Company not able to pursue any further because of that tier one tower. Go ahead, Cinder. Yeah, so a lot of team fight on the side of Spirit, but maybe not the most cash. You've got Laurel, you can roll him and kick people back, and then you have a follow through with the Shadow Step, but there isn't any. You don't have like that blink call from Axe that's just always going to land, or the CK Shadow Blade in this game. The nature of the game will be different. Uh, on Liquid, we've got. A way more clear-cut way of initiating with the charge, it's a tango combo, got dead shot. Um, and most importantly, as Matsu pointed out, their cooldowns are way shorter. So no. you can play more of a skirmishing style. This seems like a very clear approach from Liquid. When they, when they saw in game one, they're like, okay, what we tried there didn't work. We're going to shake things up a lot. Like, this lineup is very, very different from what they ran in the game that we just saw played. We'll see if that adjustment is going to pay off here. I definitely like their odds better in this one than in the previous one. You know, at the same time, <laughs> high risk playing like this, perhaps. And the battle for the Lotus is, and Mickey will reign supreme. Higher tick rate on his server. <laughs> 
the Mira, like you talked about, Shadow Demon against the Spirit Breaker. It's kind of like the, the big counter to the hero overall, along with the itemization. It, it, it feels like even in games that we've seen this picked, Spirit Breaker still destroys eventually. That's what it feels like. At least. I don't know if that's confirmation bias or what. Would you agree? Uh, disagree? Spout. I mean, I, I think Core Spirit Breaker is extremely powerful right now, almost no matter. I think you need to completely obliterate him in lanes to shut him down. Uh, we saw the game against Muerta just now in the other series with VP against Pet Boom, and despite the Heritage playing a very good laning stage against Pure Spirit Breaker, he still came online eventually and became top net first. So, yeah, this hero is kind of crazy right now. It's banned in most games for a reason, and I'm kind of surprised that we get to see it twice today. I thought this hero was just going to be an almost must ban in every game, but the teams are trying to find solutions. Obviously, we saw the Doom as one potential solution didn't work, and now we see Mira on the Shadow Demon. Demonic Purge is yes. an S tier spell against Spirit Breaker, slows you to a crawl, removes all those. Um, but yeah, we'll see if that's enough. We've, we've seen this tried by other teams. This is not the first time we've turned a lot Shadow Demon against Spirit Breaker. I think the last time we saw yep. it also lost. It, it works a couple of times in the game, and then he gets enough items, it just doesn't matter anymore, it feels like. That is exactly how it is. It, I think one of the big issues, maybe, if you want to call it that, with Spirit Breaker, the ability to farm has been just power crept so hard yes. <laughs> over the last couple that of is, years. That is why. He's one of the fastest farmers in the game. And he's a cow. That doesn't really make sense. It, it's kind of crazy that a hero that used to have it as his Achilles heel, right, was the struggle to find farm, is now top net worth in a lot of its games. Like, that's a very major transfer of heroes under. Maybe it's a bit on the high side right now. Uh, he definitely seems to be... Okay, hang on. Make no to it. Kosh kept carrying him back into the silence, but just barely... Range. Bottom lane, Insania takes a tumble via Mira, who's now getting Radiance chased by Mikke, but won't pursue any attack. further, it looks like. There's too many creeps in the tower, Mikke can't really afford to go hunting for a potential Shattered Demon kill there, he needs to. Yes. Yeah, this is a very easy lane for Tide, I think. There's a reason that Spirit went for this as their last pick in the game. Uh, the lane matchup of, of Weaver is very straightforward. You get a couple points of Kraken Shell, you largely mitigate all of the Geminate attack. Dyer's middle tower. So, top attack. Top network. so calling it now. Uh, dead in the water against Weaver. Very good. Against Pango. Very good. Against Spirit Breaker. Very, very good. My god. It, it is, is very good. That is a, an S tier shard this game, I think. Yeah. I would not be surprised if he collapsed prioritizes that very quickly. The fact that you can just anchor them and then when the Spectre actually has farm people to ult in anytime they want. That's a nice pickoff with just that as well. Without too much to really spend by doing so. Yeah, just just an anchor anchor and a shadow step still supports as well. Of course, Mickey does have Gemini, which helps. Yeah. Something. When he gets level 25, he might take the one with the division. <laughs> three times. The other two cards are melee against us. It's going to be the same issue we saw last game to a degree. Let's see what kind of build that Foxy ends up going for. I know. It feels like they start out as support with Marta and then eventually turn into support anyway. Oh, big die damage against die. Dude, nice block! Nice block, body block the Guitaro, uh, gonna continue on! Oh. One not gonna survive. He'd be a little bit too late as Yotaro claims that kill. That was just flat out. That was just... What the hell was execution? They force out the charge first Radiance off with a bit of damage and harassed him. Way after. I probably had the option there of TPing back to base. Obviously, Spirit Breaker is one of the heroes in the game that suffers the least from porting to base. You can just charge back to the top lane. So maybe regretting that choice right now of not going for that. I definitely think he would have survived. The kill was very slow. But he'll make the same play just with a death returning top. All this talk about Pango getting nerfed, quote unquote, to the ground several times now. And we're still seeing it. Yep, pretty consistent. Radiance bottom you think, uh, is under attack. Mira. Is Watchbook already used by Nisha? Be careful, roll in, not gonna connect from Laurel. Sandy is showing himself now, so... Well done. <laughs> yeah, talk to me about your, your thoughts on how strong Pango is. You look still continue rabid. to get picked, because the one thing that hasn't really been nerfed, I think, is his ult. If I'm yeah. not mistaken. So, uh, the, the concept of the hero is largely the same. Tweaking numbers, a little bit Radiance less damage on this spell, a little less damage, attack. a little more mana cost, but the essence of what the hero does is largely unchanged, because it's flying confusal, burning mana, and then having an ult is very hard to count. 
there. Nice dead shot from Rivera back into the fray. Will die as a result as Nisha comes off that new rolling thunder, but the haste for him being applied by Laurel. Dodge out a couple of those rolls. He's not able to follow up. It's a nice roll in. Boxy on a bunch of creep will oh. die to the neutrals. Radiant's bottom tower. Laurel could maybe be charged right now. They have the vision, but not quite. Cancel it out. was a surprise to <laughs> receive the hit and run there. Yeah. And then dies to creeps anyway. He's going to be very happy to die to the nude. Quite a bit of waste of time there from Laurel. and Collapse has Meteor Hammer, by the way. And Weaver has no stun. We have three power for Collapse at the nine minute mark. He has Precious Bounty. He's eventually going to go for the Hurricane Pike, or at least the Dragon Lance right now. How does that work against that water? You know? Uh, I think you just move with the anchor, but it stays on you. Right, right. Anchor, just far off. Wait, half HP, gonna use that ult to get away onto the other side. Mickey is waiting for him, but does not have the damage at this point. Or back to base. Yeah, he's gonna live, but that's still a good move from Liquid, slowing him down quite a lot. Having to use ult and TP to just survive, and they find Koshka here too, and nicely done. A good sequence from them. Let's count that as a kill and a half, with how much Yatoro he just lost from having to force the base, having to walk his way to top lane, and having to buy a TP as well. The defenses add up, and the collapse has been serious tower damage too. Two games now, he's getting massive stacks. Yeah, this time around he won't be farming it too fast though, because he went for three points of crack and kill. This is a bit slow. But eventually he'll get through it. In smaller bites. Xania nether blasting the tower. So eventually will be delayed trade between the two to one. Top tower has fallen. Even game so far. Team Spirit at this point was like maybe 2k ahead. And they just kept progressing in that game number one just slowly until they just hit a point where they could not lose a fight or even a hero for very considerable. Yeah. The Liquid faring a bit better this time around. I guess something that's worth pointing out is uh, the discrepancy between quality of tied games, you could say. The matchups that are tied in this game are so much better than Zai's were in last game, so I'm expecting Collapse to have a better showing. There's nothing here that's preventing him from getting Ravage off, unless you get like some sort of ridiculously perfect chain combo around Kraken. Under attack. Um, or you line up an exact silence combo. I mean, you get where I'm getting at. It's very difficult from having that impact. Uh, and you don't have the most obvious Silver Edge buyers either. Are you going to buy it on Weaver? A double in this, I hear yeah, that. Yeah, I mean... I it's not out of the question because buying crit on this hero is good anyway, and you're also against Spectre, so you probably do want to break. None of your heroes naturally really love itemizing this, so. Well, Myrta has a core with my Silver yes. Edge, right? But Moxie has Brown Boots, I mean, so. Could we see? He's almost the, there. We used to see a lot of Shadow Blade on, on the uh, Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker well. can buy Silver Edge, but it's, it's a little bit awkward because. Your initial attack is obviously has to be melee. You have to charge through. Uh, so you're at the mercy of vision and. And Boxy gonna dodge the roll. If he knows to him, Nisha gets off that rolling thunder. Now collapse stuck inside the calling right now. Looks like that's gonna be a freebie for Liquid. Nice turnaround. Right. Nether Side's gonna be applied to the Phoenix, but Poshka dives away. Very low HP, takes a full swatch buckle. Get the shield back to follow here. Oh, nice Poshka, no Carl, able to get the initiation off onto Nisha, but the heal's coming out from Insania. Will it actually be enough? They're gonna take out the Pugna first. Got that Butler. Now the chase is on. A two for one right now, Jitoro. Ready to go. Mickey running out of mana though. You see the ult from that shadow demon applied to Zai. Just can't do anything. Nice play calling though. It's not gonna be enough to save out Mr. Zai. Triple kill for Laurel. Mickey. Potentially go for some more, but he'll back away. So I think a three for one. Yeah, it's gonna cost like with their mid tower too. Radiant to the He's gonna show back up here. He's gonna hammer. We're going to clip it this time around, but imagine that it's just a, a matter of time before he completes this. So, yeah, honestly, a, a pretty good start there from Liquid, the way they isolated and killed off Collapse. It was very telling how long that took for four heroes to bring him down, but they do get there with all of those combinations. Make it okay. scary, but... Yeah, it was a more elongated fight than I remember. It was a three for three. 
And it's worth keeping in mind that Spirit's lineup, obviously, we talked about big team fight versus skirmishing power. Earth Spirit is an incredible skirmishing hero at this point in the game, so they really want that value out of Larla, and they're getting it in spades so far with that triple kill in that fight. And it's a Spectre game. The hero can enable. I want to say it loses pretty few late games. There's a subset of heroes that you're not that great against. I don't. I wouldn't put Weaver in that category. I don't think no. Weaver is a particularly scary match of late game here. Well, so I would power gets big enough. With the shard changes, he's way better than he used to be. Definitely Fair. better than he used to be. But you're still running into the break problem, right? Well, yeah, Spirit Breaker can get that Silver Age, but more than likely Zai wants to go Octarine. He wants to go Yashikaya. He wants to go... Maybe, maybe you need BKB this game. I don't think. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. But I guess if you don't get BKB Lincolns, you're very pressured out of the fights by demonic perk. You might want a protection item as well. Silver Edge isn't going to be at the top of this list exactly. Oh, it's going to complete it. Oh, wait, he's on Red 4. Oh, oh that's going to turn this around now. Ravage comes through for collapse as well. Zai already dead. You think it somehow fight Mickey, but no, not enough lockdown. Dead in the water, not there yet, so yeah. not 15 minutes yet. So, that did just not work out. Zai canceled his charge just a millimeter away from his target, so didn't even get the greater bash coming through. Fucking no man's land getting countered out there. I think a lot of players will be not opting to go for these moves at all. We've seen Spirit Breakers just farming, right? Just being greedy, keep pushing side lanes, use that Midas, farm some jungle. Feels like Zai's moves have not really been paying off for him very well this game, so perhaps going for that slower and greedier play is the way to go in this one. Oh, I say that. He's immediately charging his next target in Laurel, but not going to complete that one either. Attack. Just losing out on some pretty valuable farming time. Uh, we'll oh, have to deny geez. this mid tower now as well. Radiance middle tower. Tower. Era is the same vicinity as these three members of Liquid. They're going to find the tide to start. But Mira just drops very shortly after this engagement started. It's Collapse getting charged on. Nice as Dodge out from that ult on Nisha. So this is going to be way too much damage as Zai makes his way over as well. So two for Nada. That was very nicely placed calling from Boxy, getting that double silence. Really, really ruined the counterplay from Shadow even for disrupting. Just very, very aware of the plans that Spirit had to stall that fight out and maybe get reinforcements and completely denied. So two kills for Liquid. Pretty much a dead even game right now. And they might find another one, Mikoshka. Yep, not gonna bother ulting there. Oh, hate. Yeah, would have died anyway. Okay, level no protection. 12. 300 away from Dyer's the Deso for himself. Uh, we have a Midas, of course, Dyer's on Zai. Really, okay. Oh, Laurel has Midas himself as well. Laurel, taking a lot of damage from Nietzsche. Now has a Fusal Blades completely out of mana. Getting a charge on by Zai. A big kill for Liquid. As the Zania ticking away ever so slowly to that Magnetize. We can see Mira. It's dropped by Nisha as well. Spirit needs to be really careful with what fights they choose to take. I think these couple of moves, when you don't have Spectre healthy enough to join, they're kind of just getting overwhelmed by the raw mobility and just skirmishing power of Liquid's team. This is the type of way you want to play against Tide, is to just not take 5 of 5s. So you can find 2v2s, 3v2s, whatever. You're looking great in those. Nisha has been very involved. Oh, not going to be there, but the swash is there from Nisha. He's going to use the inhibit as well. The heal's coming out, and yeah. That's a dead Yatoro again. So Liquid starting to create some serious momentum Dyer's on their side for game number two. Yeah, this is snowballing really fast. Maybe Silent was right. <laughs> Spirit aren't the ones. <laughs> I'm sure they can, they can fix it. This, uh, I want to say... Some of Spirit's worst minutes in the tournament, I think that's fair to say, have just transpired. And yep, Mickey, they're gonna try to make up for it. Caster first reverse, essentially. They're gonna get the Ravage as well. Do they have the damage to get through? Disruption from Mira. And that is a dead Weaver. Big kill for Spirit. Very Desperately good needed. Very, very good. He was gonna get off the time lapse. There was just enough of a gap between the rolling boulders that that would have been a possible play for Mickey. And if that comes off, he survives. But he just poisons him in that disruption and kills him in disruption. Yeah, we find a bit of a return kill there, and I was going to say much needed. It's not that bad yet for Spirit, because Spectre's trajectory is still looking pretty solid. Yotaro is closing in on the Sacred Relic, so we're looking at maybe a 20-21 minute Radiance. Um, and their lineup has extreme late game potential, I want to say. Phoenix, one of the best scaling supports. Shadow Demon as well has massive late game potential. 
Tide can definitely be a big factor in late game situations too. And Earth Spirit 4, we used to. Oh, oh hang on. Oh, Silas oh, oh, so in a lot of trouble. He gets deleted. Yeah, doesn't have any defensive item yet. He's working Spirit. on that Manta. I mean, the game was slipping away from Spirit, but not two extremely yeah. important kills for them, and they're back in this. I think Mira got both of them as well. So the Shadow Demon getting a, a big bag here. Wonder what he's going to go for. See a pipe flying out now. It's helping Midas, honestly. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is the best build on Shadow Demon in this game? I, I mean, is is Ags? I mean, it only gets two charges now. I mean, it, ultimately, Ags is going to be incredibly good, right? But maybe do you buy the shard? You can purge off the Corruptify from allies. You can purge off. Ah, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's good enough. Maybe just go. With he's going, he's going A the lens for now, and then we'll see what's next. Item is charged on Zai. Yeah. Another strike will be there as well. Do they have the lockdown? Yes, the bash is there. If you want to from kill that right. Higher uh, day. Oh, has I was gonna say another minus maybe coming for Boxy, but he actually switches up his build to be a Greaves instead. Helpful for the team. That item is not very popular. That's true. Interesting choice to see coming out from him. Zaro, early blade mail. Nisha's gonna pop that rolling thunder. Stadia trying to make his way over as well against the Netherblast. They have the vision now with that charge coming through, and that is a dead Spectre. Big kill for Liquid as they're just training him left and right, it feels like. As Liquid now back in decent control of this game with a 4k lead. Yeah, nowhere to Shadow Step to there. Didn't even try. You can't see any, so... Liquid making sure that when they go for these Spectre kills, they're not opening up a vulnerability on the other side of the map for him to escape to. So, clean stuff there. Picking up a Yules now on Mikoshka, interesting, obviously, key item against Spirit Breaker for the time being. Eventually, Zai is eyeing up a BKB already now, and at that point, Demonic Purge is your only real solution for Sky for a, quite a while. Right now, that Yules can pay off big time if they find the fight they will be looking for. Speaking of items, Nisha almost completing Mantle style, 50 gold off, we'll get it from this wave, and that's a, a great way for him to break out of the Earth Spirit combination. Aggression on all fronts here, and you know, it's a 5k lead for Liquid. It's looking way healthier than the last game, to say the least. Now it's a matter of keeping, enforcing your will on the map, right? Dice There's a specific type of fights you don't want to take, and I want to say those are the ones where you clump up and, you know, let the enemy team land all their big AoE spells, but a lot of skirmishes should be possible as long as you account for the Spectre factor in those. And, I don't know, maybe you're also happy to farm. I, I haven't really seen this Weaver versus Spectre matchup late game. I'm just going off of memory about how this usually goes, but maybe it's clearly different now than it used to. Maybe you feel confident. I mean, a lot of the decisions Radiant that you talk about come to team dynamics as well. We've seen a lot of teams very happy to go late game anyway. Yeah, like regardless of how the game is actually going. I, I did, at first, I thought they were just scared to go high ground in general, but it just feels like they feel like it's literally better just to wait 50 minutes, third, fourth Roche. And that's when you take your time, but other teams we've seen actually able to implement a faster play style. Guitar now with the Radiance, so big upgrade for him. Blade Mail Radiance, he's playing against currently zero BKBs, so okay. massive impact that item. A lot of damage onto Pugna as well. I think that's probably the target for Spirit that they would love to kill the most to begin the fight, is just get this Pugna out of play, remove the Decrepify threat, remove the heals onto the course. <laughs> Taro is probably able to do it in a single stun. They just need to connect something onto Sania and he will kill. Yeah, Taro again. Yeah, watch to start things out. He's gonna use his ult to dodge out the first rolling thunder proc. Nicely done, but will he still find the damage? Dead oh, God, Mir! a little bit awkward though. Disruption now from Mir. It's gonna be enough to actually save his life. It looks like it is. A bit of a miscue there from Liquid Sides, and Sania might pay the price. Laura continuing on, he has the magnified, magnified the fly to Insania trying to TP out, but a little bit ambitious at this stage. Could have been a huge kill for Liquid, who already sporting a decent lead with 6k right now. It's one of those moments where you're kicking yourself a little bit, right? Because with maybe slightly better communication, that misplay doesn't happen, and at the same time, Yotoro with a great shadow step dodge there made their their life's that bit harder. It's, it's just one support at the end of the day that you lose, but realistically speaking, that was probably a dead specter that you ended up losing, so it kind of feels like you lost two or three heroes even yeah. in that engagement. 
they're still looking very healthy on the gold, and as we all expected, guys, Spirit Breaker, top net worth, minute 23. Truly one of the heroes of all time. Um, <laughs> Octarine keep it rolling. It's finished for Zai, Midas, KB to come, I assume. It's, uh, Shadow Blade. But he will be going for the Silver Edge eventually. And it's Tormi time! Koshka will get the shard. That is a very, very good one. Yeah. Gets a lot better when he gets level 12, because then he has the protection of a much harder to kill Supernova, but still just a nice pickup in general. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, Zai will start working toward that Silver Edge. They recognize that this is an item they have to get. If he wasn't in a breaking game here, I don't think he would buy Shadow Blade even. But the break is just too important here. So you kind of have to go for it over other interesting items that we've seen people buy on this hero, such as Lincolns or Kaya Yasha. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Refreshers, you know. The whole catalog of items. Yeah, he'll find his way there eventually like any other Spirit, Spirit Breaker game we've seen this tournament. Oh yeah, he's definitely not going to fall off, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. 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 It's a something extra for the I mean, if a cow falls off, I don't think they can get back up, so that would be pretty bad if it did. Falls off what, though? Cliff. Yeah, a lot of things can't get up when they fall <laughs> off a cliff. Thank you very much for your sight. We need a 6 lead. We haven't seen a, a Rosh attack quite yet. Arch from Zai. Arch from Zai. No silver though. Lap gonna pop the pipe. Radiance pop. The strike's gonna be there. Mira is now in the area with the destruction available. Disruption. Oh, he actually gets a piece of heal from this egg as well. Still nobody has died somehow. Laura comes in, he's taking the front of the damage. There's a disruption, but now he's on enemy lines. Looks like that's gonna be the sacrifice for Team Spirit. Collapse ends up living throughout the day here. He's gonna jump right back in. Uses that anchor. That's the dead in the water onto the Pangolier. They're gonna lose their Shadow Demon though. And Yatara is gonna have to back away because they just don't have the damage right now. The big gate to be whipped into submission, but will just Shibuchi away. So two dead for Spirit, zero for Liquid. That was the anchor being shown for the first time from Spirit's side. And the panel talked about this, right? Spirit might run into damage problems in the mid game, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Laurel. Without that BKB, he just gets shut down. And there's two BKBs on the side of Liquid with massive impact there. The Spirit Breaker as well as the Weaver. Yeah, the fight's not over. Yeah, he's killing him quite a bit. Eventually, we'll fall. Peter Hammer actually connects onto two BKB with a beautiful time loss. He's going to get both of his HP back. As a result, the Toro just get right clicked down by Mickey on that Weaver. Spirit lose a very valuable member. I don't think they can go any further. Collapse with no ult, of course, using the previous fight. Zai, well, that's a Spirit Breaker, so he's fine. Yeah. He's literal opposite as an ancient apparition. He's gonna get anchored, though, and it's gone. Yeah, I think I think Zai's gonna make a point out of not using Bulldoze when he charges, because he will get Yuled a lot of the time by the Phoenix, and if he just reserves the Bulldoze for after, if there's no Demonic Purge ready, or Shadow Demon isn't in the play, he can very safely get out of there with just the Bulldoze. Because, as we've already established, there's a bit of a damage issue going on for Team Spirit right now. So another great fight here from Liquid. 10k up. First time they've got a 5-digit lead in this series. And it doesn't look like they're going to drop it anytime soon either, right? It, it feels like if, if Spirit are going to turn this game around, they need to get some big items. The BKB on Earth Spirit is definitely a start. Uh, the type of fight that he will be looking for is one that extends so long that the enemy BKBs expire and that he just keeps magnetized running on targets during it. It's a, it's a difficult challenge to overcome for him. Roach being attempted in the meantime, Apochka to get another struck with Sai. It is a 3v1. Well, I feel like he's going to get out because, again, Spirit Breaker. It's a 4v1 attack. My goodness, Collapse is looking for the anchor, but maybe he's going to prevent all that. Nisha will be grabbing the Ages of the Immortal, choosing not to put it on Weaver here. We're very confident that Mickey can stay alive. I think this is a little bit dangerous to the extent that. Mickey is playing very aggressively on his Weaver for now, and if he does get caught by some sort of Ravage combination where everything is available and Earth Spirit gets to chain all of his spells with his BKB, I think he can die. Demon I guess the same could be said for the pen. Well, maybe it's good. Just pick your poison, you know? Uh, looks like that's going to be the completed Aghanim Scepter on the way. 
so shield crash with mouth proc. Squash buckles. Has fallen. Radiant are Very scary. valuable item in general. Dyer's bottom is tower is under attack. Dyer's courier has been killed. Corner on that Aegis will take the tier 2 power. Will be the choice for Liquid. See how many powers they can get. There's only, a nut, there's only one more tier 2 after this. Spirit side in that mid lane. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Right. Another strike. It's a charge combo. Denshot gonna miss on Mira though. Oh, he's gonna lift the walk away. Be able to blink to safety. B, but the charge. Nice ward. Caster cursed by Cinder, and as usual, what a yeah, real he pile. He's like gone really far away, and he can maybe you know TP out, but that was a ward. So, nope. Just gets charged by a thousand moves speed cow, and uh, that is a fate. I not wish upon anyone. Very thick, very juicy. That was not at all relatable to what I just said. That's fine. Dyer's middle cow. tower is under attack. Collapse. To be found by Zai. Ooh, middle blink tower out. Has fallen. Doesn't quite have the silver edge yet from Zai's side, so no break. Closing it on, though. I don't only need about a thousand to go. Yashar is out picking flowers. Nice is short, so roll up is going to be available very soon for the mid laner on Liquid. If he doesn't get silence, of course, that's what that Manta's for. Poshka. Yeah, well, to a crawl thanks to that shield crash. You see the charge is coming as well. He only needs to dive. There's the calling. Trying to use the Sunray to get to the high ground. He's getting disrupted instead. And will die shortly after. No. Oh. Now the high ground right into the ghost, attempt so from not. Liquid. Is this too early? <laughs> 14k with two minutes on the Aegis. We've seen this go wrong for so many teams. I'll make it with the Satanic is a way harder kill now than he was before. That's true. And looking at the I think you can poke and prod, but you could also just really constrict the map because the thing that becomes increasingly difficult now for the Dire team is when they don't really know the spread of the enemy team, it's difficult to find the meaningful team fight. Like maybe you can smoke up and find one kill on somebody, but that's not going to change the state of the game. What you're really looking for is a really great trade-off. And Toro is going to get bugged here. That's minus armor. We'll take it out swiftly, though. Walk away. Kind of expecting a charge there from Zai. Might have been a cooldown. Regardless, they will continue to farm up all the lanes as well as the jungles. And this is another benefit to Spirit Breaker. We've been talking about this hero a decent amount, but any hero that can farm their own side of the map and join fights within seconds, just have that as a huge advantage, right? On Spirit side, it is the Spectre. But Spectre's farming speed. Nick is a ravage to start things out. He's dead. My goodness, that was quick. Yep. Now they kind of wish the Aegis was on him instead. He's going to have to wait 70 seconds and see how much Spirit can get out of this. Yeah, this is what I mean, right? This is what Spirit can do. They can smoke many heroes and find one kill, and now what? Right? Like, it's obviously a really big kill, okay, killing the Weaver. They're, they're going to be happy with it, but you're not changing the game state. You're not really going to be able to push out the waves. You're not going to be able to get control of the map. Uh, now that Ravage is on cooldown, very aggressively as I wouldn't be surprised to see them taking some opportunities themselves now, maybe with a smoke. Their Aegis will expire soon, but I don't think Pango is in any imminent danger without the Ravage. Things just slow down, and Spirit gets to get that kill essentially for free. That's obviously good news for them. We'll be looking to do the same thing again in a minute and a half. Now, one thing I will say is Spirit do have a very good Roshoff team. Yes. With the lineup that they have with the AoE, you have to fight in that area. That's just bumpy. I say they do have Remote quite a big shot. deficit, but I think hero to hero matchup, they match up very well in that area. But we'll see if that ends up coming to be. If they can try to contest this eventual second Roche. Now, that kill on Tameke was just a little blip on the radar of Liquid, because they are in firm control of this game right now. See Mira, spotted out. He'll be taken out. Koshka will be the first to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was a gem. But the support's dead for Spirit. Gem on the deck. Koshka's gem now in the hands of Zai. So Spirit recognizing that they have to try to take some risks of getting map control back, but get punished immediately, and that gem is just a big old boss. And now Yatoro 
Zai will only hit the illusion. Yatoro looks like he might be dodging the situation entirely. He's got to be really Radiant careful, though. Are scanning. Oh. If he had gone for a TP out there, that dead shot might have actually Dive stopped it and he could have died, scanning. but he chose to run away on the right. Yeah. Live, but the map is really a minefield right now for the side of Spirit. It's very, very difficult. Yeah, we don't get the opportunity to talk to the crowd too often, Cinder. How many Spirit fans in the audience? Okay. How many Liquid fans in the audience? How many Seattle Supersonic fans in the audience? There we go. Don't worry, you guys will have a team in a couple of years. All right, so Confirmed. essentially the crowd is hoping for a finals of Liquid versus the Supersonic. <laughs> I'm sure they'll get that eventually. Liquid is going to get into basketball anytime. <laughs> I had to make one reference for TI before I get fired, so yep. appreciate that. It's incredible you get fired every year. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> just keep coming back like a bad song. It's 18, 19k lead for Liquid now. As they're just waiting for the old Roach. We'll know in about a minute how long of a spawn that will be, but... With the lineup that they have, they can just push these waves consistently. Zai can be on opposite sides of the map. Very difficult to kill. Awesome. Regardless of his items, it feels like. He has some items. Smoke up right now from Liquid, so... For a pick off before the potential Roche will spawn. Spirit are trying to get some sort of safe zone, right? They just warded there and they're playing around that vision. He warded and they just have to concede the area once again, so... Effectively, they went from having 15% of the map to 20%, and then they lost to 5% again. Outside. Very difficult. There's the break, Nether Strike to follow. Big charge as well. It's only at half HP is Yatoro, but follow whatsoever. There, from Shadow Demon. Yatoro will retreat to base. Currently working on an Orchid. It's close to completion. Reckon he will... I mean, he probably wants to jump and kill the Pugna, but that's not even a possibility right now. Insania with the Eon Disc. Muerta has the Greaves against the Orchid, so that's not great either. It, it's tough, man. I I feel like it's kind of hard to itemize in general for Spectre under these circumstances, because you kind of need a little bit of everything. And I suppose the mindset is we're going to itemize the, what is most impactful when BKB's draw. An Orchid can come into play there for sure. We'll get the Shard onto Earth. That geomagnetic grip on Ally. Boy, I haven't seen a team love Tormi as much as me until now. Spirit loves it. Liquid does not give a shit. It's 35 minutes in the game. They haven't taken their own yet. Look at that. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of natural for the winning team to maybe not want to go there that much. You don't want to give up position. Yeah, they're too good for it, is what you're saying. I mean, you're essentially in such an offensive position that if you have to retreat to take the Tormentor, if the enemy team has any information that it's happening, you're kind of opening the door. Uh, for them to take some control of the map back, so you just obviously would not give them that chance. Might fall back for it later, but for now, we're going to reap the rewards of having utter domination of the map. So we expect to go to the cheese. What's going on? Mickey, this time around, she's into the back attack of recognizing based on that previous kill that, yep, Spirit can indeed burst our Weaver. Tower is under attack. We get that extra layer of protection. Leading data. I. I mean, I wonder if, I wonder if Liquid want to try to poke the high ground a little bit with this, or once again, if they feel like this will ever get out of hand. How long? Monic Purge onto Zai. Do they have the damage though? He's half HP with that BKB already activated. Bring in Lord Keys. They pop the egg with the Sunray as well. The Ravage being expended as well. He's getting healed now from his city. This cow will live on. Vegans around the world rejoice. He lives. And now they're going to try to turn this around on but Mickey, he thinks we're going to damage. That's already the Aegis down. Zai getting one more charge off. Eventually he will fall though. So beef enjoyers enjoy, but Yatoro will drop as well. So there is a trade and it's very heavy. Three dead for the eventual kill onto the cow. That was a really clutch save from Insania. Also a brilliant execution from Spirit, honestly. I did not think they were going to be able to pursue that Spirit Breaker kill at all, but clipping him on the edge of the Ravage and Sunray, that would have been a kill without Insania save. And sure, they get him in the end, but it made them overextend so much further. Liquid come in and get quite a bit of a cleanup, and this could open the door for the high ground. Obviously, Age is down, so you need to be a little bit careful on Mickey not to overcommit. This time around, there won't be a Ravage. 
Not down for 40 seconds. Tier 3 tower Dyer's down, base top. exposed. Oh. Last jumps in. Dyer's the anchor, it looks like it was Lotus to him instead. Another fortification, that's the last one for a while here from Spirit side. This time on the Nether, or the Nether Blast. You see that Desso just doing absolute work, that is a melee rack down. The last one's a little bit further, another 15 seconds for that. Oh, got a very precarious spot, trying to get to the high ground, gonna get disrupted instead. You see Lar going in with the DKB and the Blade Mill as well. A lot of damage being applied, but no kills as of yet. Spectre about to spawn yes. the shadow step here. Indeed, they just need a little bit of vision. Laurel trying to provide that onto Foxy. They kind of get something out of this, and they will. It's just the support. They lose their melee racks. Quite a mess. It cost them dearly. Yeah, that looked like a bit of an awkward situation. I don't think Laurel meant to kick collapse into the enemy team Generation. there, but they'll get out alive on their tides. Scary situation for them. Like, but with a good pickup of that melee rack. Pointed out in the... They still have their cheese. I, I don't know if they're going to consider this enough of an advantage to look for more, or if they're going to fall back into the... <laughs> I thought you were going to say, enough of an advantage to go for block of cheese. The first ever <laughs> in TI. Yeah, has that? Okay, have, I've, have I've you never seen a pro game with Not it? one, not one. Okay. I, I feel like I don't of all the people, I would have heard about it, so I'm just going to assume yeah. that it's never happened. Maybe that needs to be a little bit e make or or good. <laughs> <laughs> Just make it good, please. Yeah. Zai is now level 25. Yep. He's got a Stormcrafter. That's some nice move speed and mana. Goes Very for the 20% greater bash chance here. So now up to 37. He's Dying. decent attack speed as well with his silver edge. Kara, he's broken by the creep member and he's broken by the count. But he's actually going to use his ult onto the Thank other side. Nice. Beautifully done. They kill off Nisha right off the bat and Zai. He's left him alone with Big Egg. Sandy on the outskirts. The egg is placed with that sunray being applied. Zai will charge away. In the end, it looks like only one will be lost, although the chase is not completely over. Still a pretty damn big kill for Spirit. The timing on that was actually pretty ridiculous. As I was opening on the wall, he shadow stepped over to the other kill. So not only did they kill the Tango, but they also saved their Spectre from a really awkward situation. That could not have been any more perfect for Spirit. They get a kill and they get a tower. It's not the biggest of deals, but you know, they're staying afloat. The lead hasn't really grown very much, and you're seeing the win probability kind of not really shifting the last 10 minutes, so give it enough time, it might just start dipping down slightly. And they're getting some pretty key items, right? So Laurel getting the axe is obviously enormous, right? This is a key way of saving from the uh, Spirit Break combination onto his Spectre. That is something that you cannot break, so as long as he's in position, which he should very easily be able to get with Rolling Boulder and BKB. David target up is choosing and kick him out. Or they could use it to kick someone into terrible positioning because Liquid don't really have the best save. Finding a support, kicking them 2,000 range away, they're probably just going to die on the spot. Forty-one minutes in, it's only one melee racks, and it's 18 k lead, which is, like you said, it is somewhat substantial, but it hasn't really grown that much. The spirit fighting back, and the later this game goes, the more comfortable I'm saying that their lineup is just better, paper at least, but. A lot, Breaker's lot of always such a wild card, but yeah, in this, game at, <laughs> in this game, at the very least, there are solutions that... Oh my god, collapse! Oh, he turns into stone, though, nicely done! He's actually gonna live as a result, but it's oh, gonna cost Carl his life! Oh boy, that is not worth trading a position two for a three and a five now. Aye, 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 Spirit, down at 3v5, and they're gonna lose more than just that range rack. Did Mickey a double crit there or something? Let me tell you, Tide almost instantly died. That was ridiculous, and that's okay. Then. Well, we have all our theory crafting going about how late can this game go. Well, if you lose two heroes like that without buyback, you're going to get mega now. I don't think Spirit has any hopes of defending this without. Oh, actually, Earth Spirit buyback did come up, so maybe you could go for some sort of a hold with four heroes here, but this is going to be really, really good. The ravage to start, there's a buyback as well. The egg with the sundry in addition, Zai. Oh, they actually deleted Mickey. Somehow locked him down a hundred seconds without their Weaver now. And Liquid get away without any other casualties though. Boxy is gonna get anchored. 
gonna have to fight his way out of this one. Looks like Zyla can continue on. Just on the start, and Larson have a shoot. He can get these galore, in fact. There's the rolling thunder from Nietzsche with the roll up. He needs to lock several heroes down from Spirit, but they do lose their support at the end. Roll onto the high ground, finds the state, and Eon Dix will just delay the inevitable. So three kills in favor of Spirit. They defend. You are oh, looked undefensible and defensible, whatever the word. Is. Super close to being four kills because the Tango collapsed past Hex during the end of that Rolling Thunder, and it expired just before the Rolling Thunder did the Hex three. Otherwise, he would have been caught on his TP out, and that could big for Spirit. I mean, it's still. Pretty solid given the circumstances. We're now kind of back to the gold that we had before the 18k lead, Radiant's but we're down another lane of air, so there's going to be more problems on the map. So, still, given the circumstances, that could have just been the end of the game instead. So, I guess you got to take the small victories where you can get them. Laps with that meteor hammer. We're going to be able to pick up this tier 2 tower, it looks like. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Go for the anchor smash on building by the way. They find Yatoro. Find Yatoro. Disruption to keep him safe for the time being. In fact, it saves him in the end. Demonic Fur. Sure. Okay. Demonic Fur supplies him. Slashes in the area and has a big charge from Zyne trying to keep the rest of the at bay. But the anchor supplies to the Pangolier. That is a dead Nisha. Let's have flyback. Just waited out. Still had the cheese as well. Zion Company trying to find more than just the Shadow Demon. They're gonna find Petroshka. Like he's done so. Oh, just barely getting out. Was the tide. Laps does live. Lots of back and forth in this in this game number two. And a huge kill on the I feel like when they either team just finds one hero isolated, they just get deleted instantly. Yeah, this can this can snowball very quickly in fights for both teams. You see the, the quick kill on Tango. The good news for Liquid in that situation was that Supernova wasn't ready, so they were able to collapse onto the Phoenix and bring him down. Love the purchase of Lincoln, by the way, on him identifying. Okay, I mean, we have to just solving this. Uh, this is not an item you will use Phoenix by after Yules, but probably the best choice you have in this game, so you just try to stay afloat. That was also a refresher reveal from Collapse there. So a lot being expended from Spirit, and not honestly not really the best result, right? Considering that they found the Tango kill first. That went as well as they would have hoped, and now they're only going to kill. No ravages. Completely uncontestable. Pick up the goodies, there will be a refresher card on this. Zai has two refreshers. Do you give it to? Well, Boxy will hold Boxy on to it holding now. it, yeah, so he'll have two Pierces, Pierces of the Veils. Um, not really the best hero in this game. No. Fresh. I, I feel like maybe he's going to pass it on. I think he's, he's maybe acting probably a, holding it for Pango, right? Yeah, he's being a courier, right? A golden thread. They do have the two cheeses still. So, block of cheese enjoyers out there rejoice. Uh, definitely a possibility. What if you got four... God, bigger cheese? Big cheese. Does this look? Nah, actually, it's it's not a quarter, is it? Sixth. That's a good idea. Block of cheeses. Gold for me. Too easy to make. Let's make it eight cheeses. We've had some games this tournament that could have almost. It could there. have. Yeah, could have. Smoke now from Liquid, supporting the 25k lead. All about the buyback situation, especially for Spirit. Because it will likely just be in their base. Yep. Yeah. The engagement has been. Ended here. We're still coming onto the refresher and walks his backpack. Calling is a pretty filthy spell, and having two of them back to back is very good, but. I want it. Anyway, here comes the siege tower. We'll be calling to just the siege creep. Dyer's bottom tower has he fallen. Show himself. Look away. Gotta be very careful here. Despite having two cheeses in the Aegis, we have, we have seen a lot of high grounds get punished. Yep. And Atoro is huge. It's worth keeping in mind. This is a level 26 Spectre with six slots. There's still a bit of room to grow, but he is very, very strong. He wants to finish his Missile Blade, and then we're... Maybe get replace the Treads, and then we're at the maximum output. He has Nullifier and Bloodborne. Yeah, he can kill this Pugna very fast. 
can kill anyone really fast, essentially, if they just find the Ravage opener. Liquid are very cognizant of that fact. Let's let the Nether Blast do this. Nice step. Dyer's middle tower. Yeah, you can think that with the Dark Willow we saw the other day. <laughs> Basically a trebuchet from the Willow. If there's a Ravage, they're trying to put everything on the Mickey. That's just the Aegis, though. He's surrounded. Zyka with the card. He's showing with the Rolling Thunder as well. The egg is placed. Spirit. Or in Sir... Liquid actually want to stick around. A couple of ults just to kind of be able to fight this inside. Able to charge out with that refresher. Box is top his ult, trying to apply as much pressure as possible. But now he's in no man's land. He's going to use the, the refresher charge that we were really theory crafting. Ah, uh, yes, the refresher pike <laughs> that we all thought was going to be. Oh, dear. The Aegis all right. are gone. Middle tower. Yeah. It's under attack. We'll hold on. Uh, Collapse refreshed his Ravage and didn't have mana for it, so... Could have probably gone a lot better for Spirit than it did, which is kind of scary news for Liquid. Right? You have all these advantages, you're trying to push high ground, and despite only one Ravage coming out, you still didn't get anything out of it. And I love this from Spirit, you know, take some initiative, play on the second Ravage that you have, you know there's no Aegis. Maybe you can catch them before the BKBs come off cooldown again, and that would lead to a really big moment for you. Spectre can take care of the base, Shadow Step at the ready. Scepter for Zai? Oh boy. Seven. That's okay. <laughs> okay, well. Oh, bounty room. Don't mind if I do? Open AI would have killed him there, but that's the kind of reactions you need. Yep, true. I'm asking ChatGPT to play your game of Dota for you. Thunder is actually going to get it off, gets a stun up to two as well as Nikki trying to play quite first, but there's the destruction. Been getting a lot of the damage here, but now the threats are being applied to Kira, who dies and now buys back. Trepify. Onto Yataro, he's going to get onto the high ground safely. A whole lot was lost, but Spirit wants to support buyback, but they have to worry about his box is getting gone on now by Yataro. Nice dead shot. Keep him at bay. Looks like he'll get away safely as well, so... This might be uh, a next Roche situation. <laughs> it's, are scanning. it's really hard to go higher. It, it is really know. difficult. I mean, it, if you find the Shadow Demon again, that's... Yeah. Can't buy back, so maybe that's the main target. Absolutely. It's the kill they can possibly get, and he dies Illusion. very fast, if any. It's a matter of getting one charge connection, or a couple of swing weaver might just come hundred to zero. Keeping in mind that Mira doesn't have a defensive item. He has Blink Dagger, no Aeon Disc, no Ghost Scepter, that sort. Try to stay alive against some hard hitting heroes. Is everything. Tormi, number three, if my correct. Laura will get that shard. Which means everybody have one now? On their team? No. Mira does not. Wow, the support. <laughs> After all that, the support still didn't get a shard. That's a lot of 50-50 that is lost. Yeah, th I think they would actually kind of like to have the demonic. Yeah. Oh, no, Liquid are like, oh, I forgot this existed. Okay. Sadie, enjoy your worthless shard. Maybe they watched that boot. came to the It's too dangerous. Tormentor has killed Bethlehem more times than they have killed that. They have buffed this Pugna Shard over of course, the last couple of years. Certainly better than it used to. Gas range on the drain into it. Okay, it's either that or the Muerta one, which as a support... Oh, shoot, he has. He has. He has. Yeah. They must have killed Tormi already. That's just bounty. It's okay. But it are the Shard on the support. There's no grab ally. That's Although, Toronto Tokyo literally never bought the Shard. Yeah. He doesn't want to stun his teammate. I don't know how to click out of that. He had bigger items to get. Yeah. He wanted to set the world record for most health on a hero, game, which he might have actually done. That's true. The shard doesn't help him. He got 14k health at one. Might have not been the one today, because he had another game as well where he had the same build on, on dying. Absolutely Gosh. absurd. Radiant Oscan. Heart. Hagenim Scepter. Chanel with a double damage bottle. They can hold on to this for the next Roche off. Could be in the next minute. That would be huge. 
himself the placement from Sai here. Devil damage! Waiting for any maybe count. We'll go here. Some charge to start things off for Zai. Looks like another strike that the disruption is there. He's gonna get cleansed now. He's already at half a key. He's gonna pop his pressure and try to get away. The roller thunder's now in. Chris Nisha. Not too much damage. Hopefully the all their efforts on the Laurel, who's kind of on the sideline. He's just trying to step into stone to stay alive. They lose the Shadow Demon though. Now the roll away from Laurel. Being pursued by Vinke, who still has oh, double damage. Collapses, almost gets insta given. And now the charge is there to try to finish him off, and he does so successfully. Will buy back two members of Spirit, but still with their ultimate. The Ravage is still available. Looks like they're going to be able to sacrifice Insania here. Gitaro's kind of all alone. Insania now. Vinke need, okay? Will he die? The nullifier is there to finish him off with Yotaro. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? You're getting surrounded yourself in Deadshot. He's stuck inside the trees and he is dead. A hundred seconds of no specter. The Ravage finally comes out. So two members of Liquid do die with their ancient exposed. So the spirit side. Zoning. <laughs> he was zoning three heroes for like ten seconds. And Mickey looking at the, the, the rest of the buildings here to ensure victory in this game number two for Team Liquid. Two buybacks now from Liquid side. Mega Creeps in their favor, and now it's a five versus three without the carry from the side of Spirit. Dyer's the Ancient being exposed. Been All been they have to do is right click that with that Desolator, so those GG's are called. This series is going to game three, which I'm glad to see because it deserves it. Yeah, really nice bounce back from Liquid. After that first game, they really, they solved their problems from that first game very elegantly here with the, a couple of adjustments in the draft, right? They went away from this